Hi, this is Maginoni, and let's talk previews. Now, these are this is from the June's previews, which are for books scheduled to come out in August. So this is the one before all the big stuff starts happening for DC. Um, I didn't really have a lot to say about some of the titles that are coming out, just because you know for the most part they're ending, or um, you know they're in the middle of events. You know, like for example. The Fear Itself and Flashpoint. Now I'm going to do a special Flashpoint video later, but at least for right now here is uh, some books that caught my attention in one way, shape, or form or another. So let's look at DC um, first. We have Justice League of America number 60. Now in this description here, it says, in the aftermath of Eclipse Arising, the team faces an uncertain future. I think what they meant to say is the Justice League of America has just received their pink slips and they are uncertain about if they're being renewed or not and won't know until September. I know we know, but at the time of this printing, they didn't know. So there's that. Uh, next up is Superman Beyond number zero. Now, I'm only highlighting this one because of um, the Batman Beyond and, you know, those fans. Uh, in this case, like Superman appeared in that one one uh, issue with Batman, and so they give you a taste of what he was like, uh, at least in the terms of the comic book side of things, and um, you get a nice zero issue for it. Obviously, you know that they're not continuing it in after September, but if you're a fan of the Beyond Universe, this might be something that's of interest to you. Uh, personally, I'm going to drop it. I'm not even going to pick this up. I've already dropped Batman Beyond. And so I'm pretty much going to ignore this, uh, this one. Now, I'm not, this one caught me totally by surprise. This is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, by IDW. And I just, I guess what I'm thinking is, is this book still relevant any longer? Well, it was a cult classic back, way back in the day. And people went in crazy trying to buy those early issues. Um, we're spending hundreds of dollars doing it. I, I think that overall, this Turtles, no matter what you do to it, has been damaged so much by the TV show, I mean, the TV cartoons and the movies that, uh, you know, I think you're only going to find a small number of people buying it. And, you know, I don't care if Kevin Eastman, you know, one of the original creators did this, it means absolutely nothing to, for an example, most of the people uh, who were born, you know, in the last 20, 50, about 20 years means nothing. So I'm, I was like just caught by surprise that they're still attempting to reboot this thing. Then comes Infinite, number one. Now I sighed because I first sighed when I saw that this book was illustrated by Lightfield because I mean I, I understand, I fully understand that he his artwork is very stylized and I fully understand that he has his extreme fans that just love him to death and but what really it was like a dagger through my icy dagger going through my body is it's written by Robert Kirkman I love Robert Kirkman's uh, writing especially in his comics and the problem I have is this could actually be a fantastic book if it ever reaches number two. And Lightfield, I mean, Lightfield can't even put one book out on time. But yet he's got Infinite and he's got um, the Hawk and Dove book coming out in September. I And he also has that Evangelina, uh, he's writing some Ev Evangelina comic. And I'm thinking, you have no time. We, I think Kirkman's gonna have scripts that will never see the light of day because this there won't be any more issues illustrated by Lightfield unless Kirkman drops them and gets somebody else to draw it. Uh, personally, I am not buying this. I, I just I don't like his art style. I think um, I I think that his style is old. Uh, I don't think it's I mean they're boards. They are literally boards. They have no curves. I mean, they have a little bit of... Well, the women have insane curves. But there's just... I mean... 
it just everything just it reminds me of just horrible art and I see lots of talented people who are trying to break in who just can't do it and I see this happen and I'm like this could have been actually illustrated by somebody new who deserves a break and not somebody who has swiped um, artwork on his light board um, anyways that's that now I'm going to start saying some positive things I know I've been saying some negative things and um, Im images coming out of this a bunch of number one titles and I'm not sure how long these things are going to last but the reason why I'm pointing this out is I realize that come September uh, people are probably going to be pissed off because their favorite comic book was rebooted or canceled or changed in such a horrific way that they you know that they want to go on a rampage so what I suggest is this don't hurt the comic book store and just drop the title if you're gonna drop the title you know you might want to consider buying a number one issue and then maybe you might find something that's really cool along the way uh, let's go with the uh, Vasil or Vassell sorry Vassell this is like a, basically they perfected a way to transfer mind and spirit into, from one person to another and they're suggesting uh, there could be corporate sabot not sabotage but corporate spying and uh, it's gonna be like a a bar raising sci-fi noir epic so there's that uh, next up is the vault uh, this one isn't going to try to deceive you in the sense of if this is an awesome book it's going to continue this is just three issues so uh, you know if you like a horror book this might be up your alley uh, basically it's like a team of treasure hunters that are struggling to uh, excavate a dangerous and um, legendary treasure pit uh, before a massive storm comes and of course they discover something that is uh, very scary down on an idea. Um, I don't know. Potentially, this might actually be kind of interesting. Uh, we'll see. I'm, I'm really seriously tempted to get it, just out of curiosity. Uh, next up is Epoch. Um, I really don't know what to make of this one. I'm really confused. Um, this is, again, this is a one of five mini series. And basically, what you have here is there's like a tournament going on. There's supernatural going on, and there's some sort of uh, reporter thing that's going on. And I'm sorry, not a reporter, a New York a police detective. I'm really curious. I'm really, really curious. But you know, these things can go horribly wrong. The only time I've seen the tournament saga go fairly well is in uh, Dragon Ball and Yu Hakusho, uh, Tenju Tengi also had some decent moments but I don't think they had enough tournaments to make me uh, go okay it's better than Dragon Ball but I'm really that's what I'm saying I'm kinda curious and not curious at the same time if you look at the top here you get a better idea of the epic battle that is to come then there is Bomb Queen uh, Bomb Queen 7 1 of 4 this is basically the way I look at it is boom boom done correctly and that's boom boom from uh, the factor then comes um, severed this is another horror one now I'll show you the artwork in this because I think while the other ones are very stylized and very modern this is severed as you can see it's a lot different and this is another one that's a, one of those horror ones where kids like run away and he's traveling cross country and he meets a man with very sharp teeth and um, I know that's not a very good description but uh, that's just the gist of it and um, it I, I'm really curious to um, check this one out mostly because I think the artwork just looks interesting to me it's not it's not flashy, you know, like, uh, for example, here is, here's Epoch over here. I mean, this one just looks like your traditional top cow image type title. And, you know, it's like, it, nothing, I don't think it really does anything to distinguish itself. But this one, I think, does. 
and that's why I think I'm really curious. It has a very, um, in, in the, the way the environment is, like in the forest here, it looks interesting, and I think, I mean, there's a lot more that's going on within each of these pa panels versus some of the more other comics that are coming out. Oh, and then also Morning Glories 2 uh, trade is coming out. Now, uh, there's Kevin Smith's The Bionic Man. Now, when I first saw this, I was like, The Bionic Man, is this, again, another one of those books that's relevant? Stronger, faster, better than before? Who cares? This is, you know, when this first came out, yeah, this was, like, really revolutionary. Here's a man who with cybernetic power abilities, you know. And nowadays, it's like, we kind of already have that. You know, we have people with uh, mechanical parts, you know, like, for an example, legs or uh, things like that. And, I mean, there's people have exoskeletons that they can use to lift heavier things. So I don't think it's special any longer. And just from what I've seen by this, I don't think Kevin Smith's done anything to put the Bionic Man into the 25th century. Um, I would have liked to have seen something a little more than just cybernetic parts. Um, I understand that, of course, that if you did something different, then it's no technically it's no longer the Bionic Man, and the Bionic Man fans will just cry and whine, saying you've ruined everything. But I don't. I think it it's just not relevant any longer. Next up is Bloody Monday. Now, the reason why I'm saying Bloody Monday is because um, this book is kind of like 24. Uh, basically, there's a, a, a super cyber guy, and he's trying to investigate um, his father because his father was accused of, accused of a murder, so he's trying to prove his innocence, and along the way, he uncovers a secret organization trying to destroy Tokyo. And they made this into a TV series in Japan. And uh, it, like I said, it plays just like 24 does. Now, the reason why I'm recommending this is because uh, Bloody Monday is, if you ever wanted to do a drinking game with comic books, Bloody Monday is the one to do it. You don't know, when I was watching the TV series, you don't know how many times they said Bloody Monday. They said it so many times that if you took a shot, you would be drunk by the time the show is over. So that's why I am putting that one out. Okay, next up is uh, Damaged from Radical. This is another number one. And the reason why this kind of caught my interest is it reminds me of The Punisher in a way. And at, now keep in mind, I don't mean it as the guy, you know, the exact clone of The Punisher. But basically this is the story of two brothers uh, who were policemen, they were involved in uh, a brutal gang massacre type thing, and one brother believed in justice, the other one did not. Uh, so that they split, they go their separate ways, now they're both heading for retirement, and they're basically training their protégés to replace them. And this book is promising epic violence, and that's why I'm saying is it reminds me of the Punisher in the sense that you have a a guy who's gone through an immense tragedy and he's uh, become very violent as a result of it. I feel like a normal person now becoming extremely violent and taking his aggression out on uh, evil, I think. So I think that's, um, it, um, that's how I caught my attention. Then we have Ultimate Comics, Hawkeye number one of four. Hawkeye is probably one of the more popular of the Ultimate line characters, and I'm kind of curious to see what they're going to do with this one. And along that lines, we have the Ultimate comics of the Ultimates. So that's, uh, you know, obviously the smart, I mean, the Avengers storyline. So I'll probably get this one for sure. Uh, along to uh, Secret Avengers, you have Warren Ellis taking the reins. So if you're a Warren Ellis fan, keep your eyes out on this one. I included Incredible Hulk 634 because I think this is a badass picture. The Hulk uh, about to lay some smackdown and Finn Fang Foom. And last but not least, Big Shots Punisher back with a blast. Uh, what's of interest to this is it's written by Greg Rucka. And 
I have a feeling this is probably going to put Punisher back on uh, people's radar. And uh, in August, you actually get two issues of Punisher. Um, so I have a feeling this book is going to get a lot of attention as long as he's writing it. And um, it'll probably go back to obscurity once it's done. So uh, jump on the bandwagon while you can. Uh, anyways, that's my free view, my short look at previews. Like I said, there's, there is a lot more books that are coming out, but because of the tie-ins and all that stuff, I cut all that stuff out. And uh, I'll be doing a, a special video for Flashpoint, Issue 2s. I'm also going to do a uh, commentary thing for addressing DC's 52 issues. Um, but I'm going to save that for next month. Um, anyways, if you have any comments or questions, let me know. Rate the video up or down, let me know what you think. I'm curious to know if there's any of these books that caught your attention, or if um, what else are you thinking about getting that I didn't address. So let me know. So until